Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to worship. Uh, welcome, too, to those on Zoom and those who are live streaming in this morning. Welcome to you all. Um, we are allowed to sing, so please stand and sing if you would wish. Please be considerate of other people, but we, we are allowed to sing, so that's good news. So we are going to stand and sing our first hymn, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal and ever blessed God, to know you is life eternal. Help us daily to know you better, that daily we may fully enter into real life and may fully know the meaning of life. Eternal and ever blessed God, who to serve is perfect freedom. Grant that today we may serve you daily more faithfully, so that in doing your will, we may find peace. Eternal and ever-blessed God, to love you is fullness of joy. Help us day by day to love you more, so that we may come a little nearer to loving you as you first loved us. Father God, we offer you our morning's worship, whether we're here in person or watching on a tablet, a machine, a phone or a computer. We thank you that we are not connected by technology, but we are connected to you by your love. We are connected to each other through being the Christian church, the family. So Father, we offer you everything that we have we ask that you will open our ears to hear what you are saying to us today through the songs, through the prayers, through the reading of the Bible, through what is said. 
and that your Holy Spirit will speak into each of our hearts that we might know you speaking to us, that we might know your encouragement as we leave this place today and go about our daily business into the week, that we might know your strength, that we might know that you are with us every step of the way. Thank you, Father God, for who you are. Thank you for sending us Jesus Christ, your Son. And thank you that the Holy Spirit is here with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to have our Bible reading now from John chapter 6, reading from verses 51 to 58. John chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I, sh which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you can eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. If you just watch the uh, screen, you're going to see something that you've probably seen on the adverts on the telly, and then I'll explain why afterwards. George Clooney's on the line. Mr. Warburton? Johnny? Are you on mute? He can wait. John, eh, he hung up. No, he's, got, he's not there. He's making toast. Silly advert, but it's memorable, isn't it? The latest Warburton's bread advert. Other bakers, as they say on the TV, are available. Uh, it makes me laugh. To the boss of the firm, Jonathan Warburton, nothing and no one, not even George Clooney, is more important than enjoying his toast. His bread is the priority in his life. During August this year in the church, we'll be reading a lot about what it says about bread in the Bible. It may be by the end of August, you're either well-fed or well-fed up with hearing about bread. A few years ago, I was helping on a summer camp, and our job, the two of us, was to, was to go to the supermarket every day for the lunches, and there were about 30, 40 people on, on this camp. 
So we dutifully went every day to the nearest Asda, came back with crisps, bread rolls, things to put on the rolls, cakes and biscuits and fruit. And after the fourth day of the camp, we asked if there was anything that anybody else wanted, you know, that we weren't bringing for lunch. Would somebody fancy anything else? And somebody said, I don't really care as long as it's not more bread. Um, she said, I'm totally breaded out. And I thought, well, how ungrateful. She sits there in a chair. I'm running off to Asda every day. I come back with all these things, and she says, oh, not bread again. I didn't actually say to her, well, you can always go and do your own shopping, if you like, because I'm quite a nice person inside. But that's more or less what she was saying. Can't you think of anything apart from bread for our lunch? In the Old Testament, the most famous occasion of bread being provided was for the people of Israel. When they had been freed from slavery in Egypt and were in the desert making their way to Canaan, food was scarce and they were on the point of desperation, feeling it would have been better to be back in Egypt in slavery rather than wandering around this desert with no food. And we remember the story of how God miraculously provided bread from heaven. They called it manna, M-A-N-N-A, -N -N, manna. This stuff, this white, flaky stuff that was basically bread, was miraculously appeared on the floor from heaven every night while they were asleep. And then the day after, they got up and they could eat it, and it sustained them through their wilderness experience. They had a double portion on Friday, so they didn't have to collect this bread on the Sabbath, on the Saturday. But even they got fed up of manna, and they complained. How ungrateful. God was providing miraculous food in the middle of the desert, and people, like us, complained because it was boring. It's the same every day. And Jesus says, it's not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So that's Jesus looking back on that story. The Old Testament story which was still being talked about in Jesus' time because it showed that God can provide us, his people, with what we need even in times when we feel like we're in a desert, when we're dry, when we don't know where to turn, where we don't know where we're going next. The truth is that God can still provide for us. And that can be physical or it can be spiritual. And even if we sometimes complain, surely we realize that God is what they call Jehovah Jireh, the Hebrew, our provider. Do we trust him? enough to provide us with what we need on a daily basis. It's hard, but we can do it. Our God can be trusted. Jesus will provide us with our daily bread. We sometimes describe things that are ordinary and mundane as our bread and butter. For example, if you were the owner of Boundary Mill, your bread and butter would be selling clothes and books and fancy goods, as well as coffee and tea in your coffee shop. If you were a mechanic in a local garage, your bread and butter would be doing MOTs and servicing cars. You would do other things as well, but the bread and butter stuff is the daily routine that keeps the business turning over. What about us as Christians? What might our bread and butter be? How important is bread to us? As we said, we read a lot about bread in the Bible but what relevance does it have for us today? Some people are even intolerant, aren't they? Wheat intolerant. They don't even eat bread. So why is bread so important? Is the spiritual bread important? The one who calls himself the bread of life, is he more important to us than anything or anyone else? When we're spending time with Jesus, do we get rid of all the other distractions like the Warburton's man did? Put your computer down. I'm going to eat my toast. Do we really seek first the kingdom of God? At the beginning of chapter 6 of John's Gospel, Jesus feeds the 5,000 with what? Five loaves and two fish. Here again, 
we've got the symbolism of bread. It's a miracle. It's humanly impossible. But Jesus is more than able to feed people's physical hunger. As many people today can testify, when they, they have been desperately in need, miracles have happened. Food has arrived. Money has been given to them. Finances have been raised. Protection has been supplied and circumstances have changed. doesn't mean that nothing bad will ever happen to Christians, but Christians can testify, they can tell us that when they have prayed in desperate situations, God has provided. Bread has been given. So here Jesus is again referring back to the provision of manna from heaven and then saying, I, Jesus, am the real bread of heaven. I have been sent by God to feed you. To feed your physical hunger, but also to give you spiritual nourishment. Something in your souls that will keep you going day after day. He has come to give us real spiritual life. We sang in our first song, if you remember, that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is the living word. Our Bibles are the written word. And Jesus speaks to us through his Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our minds um, and, in, and through the things that we read and hear. We feed on his teachings. Many of us may have used the daily notes, the Bible notes, called our daily bread. That's why it's called our daily bread, because we feed on it daily. We read it, we look at the Bible, we look at the notes, and we let it feed our souls. We wouldn't go seven days, would we, without a meal, if we could help it. So why should we go from Sunday to Sunday without feeding on the bread of life, without reading our Bibles, without feeding on the word and seeing what God might be saying to us. But we also feed on him by faith in our hearts through his Holy Spirit. We say those words at communion, don't we? We'll be starting having communion again, I understand, in September. Feed on, your heart, feed on him by faith in your hearts with thanksgiving as the bread is given out to us, the symbol of Christ's body. And we are reminding ourselves of what Jesus did at the Last Supper with his disciples on the night before he was betrayed, on the night before he was crucified on a cross. Jesus is recorded as saying in our reading today, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. What is Jesus saying? It's almost cannibalism, isn't it? What is he saying? That he's gonna, you've got to eat his flesh. Of course, that's not what he's saying at all. Jesus is saying that he is God in a human body, incarnate, in flesh, sent by God to live on our earth for a short time. He lived and taught us how to live, but more than that, he gave us a way to come back to God. We so want to try and reach God. So Jesus dealt with the consequences of sin that block that reaching out to God, did away with the barrier that is sin between us and God, provided us with a bridge so that we can cross over. So no longer do we have to reach out to a God that is somewhere out there that we will never, ever find. God has reached down to us in the person of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. And we promise that if we receive this gift, the bread of heaven, Jesus Christ, then we will be raised up at the last day. That means that when we die, we will live. We will live for eternity. That's God's promise to each and every believer who trusts in Jesus. <coughs> How do we feed on him? We read our Bibles. We meditate, we chew on it, we let it feed into our souls. We have prayer and fellowship with others. And as we do that, we are fed. So let's not get fed up of talking about bread or feeding on bread. Let's do what Mr. Warburton did and make this a priority.
Let's not be distracted. Let's remember that God can supply all our needs. Jesus fed a multitude, five fish, two loaves. Sorry, five loaves and two fish. Um, um, he fed the multitude with a small picnic. He can surely feed us today. What can we do to supply and to feed others? Is that supporting aid charities or local food banks? Let us remember what bread we can give to others. Let's remember what our spiritual bread and butter is, our daily bread, reading God's word, sharing the word of God, Jesus Christ, with others. And if we have the opportunity with others who are asking to be fed, who are looking and asking, what is this Christianity? Who is this Jesus? And let's feed on him in our hearts by faith as we share communion and remember the Passover meal. Jesus prepared to give his life for us on the cross. This is my body, broken for you. He said, I am the living bread. Eat this bread and live forever. We're going to um, sing another song that's on the screen. We actually did this on the Zoom service last week, but it had no lyrics. So this week it's got lyrics, and we can sing along to it. Uh, what Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and I will raise you up on the last day.
going to turn to our prayers of intercession now. Let's pray. Father God, we realise how fortunate we are with everything that we have. We thank you for it. Our families, our friends, our church, the things that we have, our technology, our holidays. As we come and say thank you, we also realise that others don't have as much as we do. We ask and we confess that you will forgive us when we are selfish, when we keep things for ourselves and don't think about others. We pray for refugees who have no home, no place to call their own. The problem that we have with people jumping in boats and being exploited and landing on shores of uh, European countries as a refugee. We pray that the laws that are made will be fair, that they will be compassionate. that people who exploit those in need will be caught, will be stopped and punished. We pray for those who suffer from racism. Those who, through no fault of their own, are spoken about on Facebook, or in newspapers, and the hate that is so often thrown at them. Lord, may we stand firm for justice and for defending those who can't defend themselves. We pray for those who love freedom in lands where freedom has been lost. We pray for those who are persecuted especially those who are persecuted for their Christian faith. We thank you for their bravery. We pray that you will help them, supply them with all their needs, both physical and spiritual. We pray for those who live or work in situations where it is very difficult to be a Christian, where their faith is mocked, where they may even lose their jobs. We ask for employers to be just in their deliverance of their workers, with the way that they speak to them, with the way that they deal with their workers, that all might be treated fairly. We pray for those who work in our NHS, in our hospitals, in our emergency services. We continue to thank you for the massive work that they've done over the last couple of years and are still doing today. We ask for rest for them, for strength. And we pray against and continue to pray against the coronavirus. That we might live healthy lives that we might value what we have. We thank you for those who have given us a way out of this virus with the vaccines, for their intellect, for their diligence, and for those who have delivered it across the world. We pray that those who haven't yet received this vaccine in our country and especially abroad might be given it very soon. And may we, as we come out of this pandemic, be grateful for what we have and be willing to share that with other people. So, Father, we ask all our prayers and we remember those who are sick, those who would have been with us in worship today but can't be for whatever reason. 
We ask for your healing, for your encouragement, for your forgiveness, for your direction. We ask all our prayers in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Shall we say together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is probably the most famous one, which has bread in it. Um, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Talking about the Old Testament story where God gave manna. Bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. for all our Welsh-speaking people out there. I forgot to tell you about that. I didn't know about that. It was from a church in Wales. So uh, David Rowe's uh, brother would have loved that because he speaks Welsh. So well done for that. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>